When people think of paintings by great artists such as Vincent van Gogh, they'll often think of these paintings just as images. But in fact, these are physical objects. These are as much works of craft as they are works of art. When people talk about the old master paintings, they'll often talk about why they were painted and who painted them and when, but they won't often talk about how they were painted. I believe how they were painted is intimately linked with the reasons why they were painted. I'm on a journey. I'm going to try and discover something about the great painters, where they worked and how they worked. I'm going to be following in the footsteps of the great rebel artists, Cezanne, Monet, Van Gogh, Modigliani, Brancusi and Picasso. I'm starting to really cook on gas. Modigliani was high on alcohol, high on drugs, high on women and high on his art. I can feel Monet's vibes when, I, when I'm standing here. I, I want to paint this. I don't want to stand in the living rain. In the hands of Monet, that is a magic wand. This is how Leonardo would have been taught. All small-scale pictures, or nearly all of them, were painted with tempera paint. An egg tempera paint is a very simple medium. An egg, for which you need... A free-range egg, I know. A free-range egg, yes. In fact, there was a writer in the 15th century called Cennini who said that the best eggs are country eggs, especially for painting country-type people with ruddy complexions. As you might guess, I'm an artist. Yes, we can see, we can yes. see. Yes, right, well, um, I wonder if you can help me because I'm going to try and imagine that I'm back in that period yep. doing an officially commissioned work of art as if I'm an official war artist. Peter, if your hand is like that, that so, sort of thing, just kind of thing, that's it, go for it, right, right okay. okay. Right, thank you, just hold that for about two hours and I'll be done. Oh. Well, this is a, a fabulous image. Uh, it's, it's so famous, it's almost invisible. I mean, those hands, mm -hmm. you know, it's just absolutely extraordinary because it's, that's like the smile on the Mona Lisa. That's the most famous bit of the whole work. Oh, dear. <sighs> I can't believe this. <sighs> I just want to... What have done? I just want to reach out and touch it. Tremble in wonder. Yes. <laughs> I've seen this a thousand times in books, and there's no book will ever do justice to it. <laughs> the, the, the quality, the quality of the tones and the colours, the quantity is absolutely staggering. Michelangelo, my old son, <laughs> you're one hell of a hard act to follow. Here we've got a rather special ingredient. This is excrement, because it's full of bacteria, exactly what you want. And live yoghurt, also full of bacteria. Disgusting, but you've got to do it. Break that down a bit and paint it on. Wow. That is my impression of that. And you stuck throughout here to using the Roman technique of... Yes, uh, this is all tempera. done, all done in tempera paint. This is what they would have done. This is a rather bad continental picture of the 1890s. But what I want it for is mainly for the back. And this shows that it has an authentic maker stamp. This doesn't feel right as one artist destroying effectively the work of another artist. So now we have a canvas as Monet would have expected it to look. Now we have to do the difficult bit. Forger is a trickster. He is using a person's expectations. If somebody believes something to be real, or they want it to be, or they expect it to be, he's in there. He will try to fool that person. 
this is yours for two or three million dollars. I've come up with a, a, an old master who suits you, I think, personality-wise, the way you, you look and everything like this. Right. Vincent van Gogh. Oh, really? I'm intrigued by your choice of Van Gogh. Why was your initial reaction Van Gogh? If you look at all the people Van Gogh painted, they were all plug ugly. No, they weren't. No. They're, <laughs> no. they're all very interesting people. All very interesting people. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be wondering, what am I going to make you into? This is fantastic. This is why I became a landscape painter. I mean, look at it, the interaction of the sky, the water, the land. It's the way these things buzz off each other. That's where you can make some interesting works. I'm trying to draw something that's picturesque. Now, picturesque is a dirty word nowadays, but in Victorian times, for example, it actually meant trying to search for something that was beautiful in a very particular sense. And here they are. Vincent and his beloved brother, Theo. Oh, look at that. Sunflower, a withered sunflower. Can you think of anything else that says more about the tragedy of this man's life? So bloody sad. His legacy will never ever wilt. His art will be forever. It's a cliche, but it's true.